Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Um, today we're gonna go and do our daily uh, commodities update. Uh, we'll hit all the sectors that are commodities, some precious metals. We'll go over the dollar, the 10 year yield, and uh, I'll give you my financial opinion and kind of how this stuff is all tied together. Uh, so let's dive in here. Uh, we'll start with the dollar. Uh, the dollar is actually pulling on back. Uh, we've got a nice big pullback in the dollar, uh, down 0.42% today. We hit our head on this longer term resistance line level. Uh, we tapped our head on it with a nice big wick at the top. And this to me looks like it wants to head lower, <clears throat> that it's a topping pattern and that we could potentially head lower in the dollar. That's usually a tailwind for commodities and precious metals um, and all of the sectors that we are in. Looking at the 10-year yield, the 10-year yield is going lower. Uh, we are seeing this kind of shoulder head, shoulder type deal playing out. And with the declining 10-year yield, what that's telling you is people are piling into bonds. They are afraid of something. There is fear in the markets. And that uh, commodities isn't necessarily a, a, a fear trade. Uh, it is those sell off when fear is in the market. Uh, or conversely, the Federal Reserve is in there buying bonds, pushing the 10 year lower, um, creating what is that fear. Um, because a lot of people use the, the interest rate. A declining interest rate is good for stocks and bonds. And it will slow down the rotation of money into oil and, and commodities. They are actively releasing barrels into the you know from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Uh, so we have a very complex market dynamic of the ten-year yield and oil prices all kind of being linked together. And oil prices are going down. The ten-year yield is pulling back. We could have a further pullback in oil and the ten-year yield. That is what it's looking like to me, where we could head down a little bit more in the 10-year yield uh, with bonds going up because these are, <clears throat> these are uh, inversely correlated. Uh, we could get to a point up here, perhaps, where we hit our head on this resistance line and then head, to, head lower in bonds. So it's lower in bond prices and lower in yields, which will eventually work its way higher in yields, eventually. Uh, but in the short term, I do think we're going to go lower on yields, higher on the bond prices. They're inversely correlated. The CRB uh, index, I think, will head a little bit lower. And we're going to get a A, B, C correction. Something on the lines of that. And that's what it looks like it's going to be. <clears throat> playing out. So we could go into another further correction um, before we had higher. The 10 year yield is, is confirming that, and same with some weakness in oil. But again, that is based off of Elliott Wave, does not mean that that will necessarily happen perfectly. I'm speculating there. Now, gold's heading higher, a uh, weaker dollar, weaker 10 year yield. Gold usually likes that market condition. Silver is also heading higher in the short term. Uh, we are contracting in the opening and closing prices are starting to contract. Uh, what that means is that the momentum of this impulse move higher uh, is slowing down a little bit. And we could turn and come back a little bit. So that's what I'm seeing there. Platinum heading higher today. Uh, that was the strongest of the group. Uh, so platinum looking good. Uh, bouncing off this support region. Uh, XAU to gold ratio. Uh, we have broken out of the downtrend. We could do a return move back uh, before heading higher. Uh, but that's look. That's what it looks like it's going to do. Uh, looking at GDX, we've broken the trend line. Step one, we make a higher low. Hopefully we get a higher low than that or so. And then we, uh, I think we'll turn and move higher. We've got that dollar that's declining but we can still do a return or test move. I'll go to SilJ. SilJ has broken its downtrend line. It does look like we're getting a little bit of selling pressure here. We could pull back a little bit before heading higher. But as long as the 
dollar is weaker and the 10 year yield is weaker, usually money uh, prefers to go into bonds and even precious metals. Uh, scrolling on down, looking at crude oil. Crude oil got hit pretty hard today. Uh, we were breaking out of this downtrend channel line and we got hit today. Is this a return move um, where it's a retest move and we're about to head higher eventually? Uh, we'll find out here, guys. There's the re It snaps all over the place when I try to move it. That's the return move. We'll see if we get buyers tomorrow and what this looks like. Uh, but the line is somewhere in this general vicinity as it snaps all over the place. We gotta see what happens tomorrow. It is a big sell-off day today. Uh, natural gas actually looks quite strong here. As weird as this is. Uh, we went to sell off, but buyers came in and pushed it back up. This is a bullish engulfing where we could potentially head higher. Uh, so that's looking good. XOP, yeah, you know me. This is an ETF, the Spider Oil and Gas Explorer ETF. Uh, it's a lower day today, but it's not a reversal candlestick. It's just a down day. Uh, we are kind of moving sideways here. This could be considered a bloody nose. Uh, depends what we do this month. And right now we've broken out of the downtrend lines. Uh, if you do it on a logarithmic, we've broken out of the downtrend. We're on support. Uh, I think we've got a lot of downside support with upside potential. Scrolling down to energy service companies, OIH, the ETF there. Uh, logarithmic is where I drew it. Uh, we, we're coming on down. We have not broken that downtrend line yet. Uh, and we're right squeezed in this corner here between a couple of support lines and a resistance line. We're squeezing on up. Uh, usually when you squeeze something up like this, um, on a weekly, we got a nice little bloody nose there. Usually they squeeze up to the corner here and then you get a big break. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're squeezing. Squeezing this baby hard. And we're right at the... This is a resistance level coming through here. I'll extend it out. Uh, we're right at that resistance level that we got to break through. We've got some, some resistance. Scrolling down and looking at uh, uranium 4675 is what I got on the futures contract. Usually that might be delayed a little bit. It does look like we're consolidating and squeezing up into some corner here. It looks like we're, we're, we're doing some squeezing. Which way is this thing going to break? You know, I'm not going to try to, to speculate on that, but the mining companies do look pretty favorable right here. Here's the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. We got that nice big move on a weekly candlestick basis to the upside. Downtrend line's broken. We are getting a little bit of a um, sideways movement today where the buyers equal the sellers. Remember, we had some selling pressure over there in the S&P 500 and, and NASDAQ. Uh, so maybe that impacted this where we would have gone up more if the overall markets were up more. But overall, it looks pretty good. We've got a nice big bullish engulfing. We've got two big candlesticks here, uh, small selling pressure. Uh, I think it looks good. URNM getting a little bit of selling pressure today. It's just a regular down day, no reversal candlestick. And um, this could go any way it wants to. Broken down trend line. Uh, we've got big buying pressure, small selling pressure in this right-hand side. The buyers are still in control. Everything looks good from my perspective uh, for a continued move higher. CCJ, another one, just a small down day. It's not a reversal candlestick. Reversal candlesticks look like this guy there, which is a, a bearish engulfing candlestick there. Uh, usually when you go up, you get, like in this portion here, if you notice, large up days, small down days all through this. And in a pullback, you get large down days and small up days. And what we do is we look for the differing. We, we look for a difference in the candlestick sizes. And we're getting that difference over on this right-hand side. So we need the buyers to remain strong. We need small selling pressure and to have this continue to walk up, um, up and up and up and up. And we had a real mixed bag in terms of the companies and the up and down um, motions in the, in the stocks. Looking at TAN, TAN was down today. Again, I still think we could get a return move and then a, a, a eventual move higher. That's what I think may potentially happen. We've got COPX just moving sideways today. That's not a reverse candlestick. Still had some selling pressure behind it. Uh, looks like a battle to me between the buyers and sellers. We've broken the downtrend line. So that's a good thing. Step one's to break the downtrend line. Uh, we're coming on up, but 
I don't know if it's going to be, you know, just straight higher. Uh, I think we might get some some battles with the sellers here, depending on what the overall markets do. The overall market was down today. CRB to S&P 500, it is breaking to the downside. Uh, I think that this is tied to oil. It's tied to the 10-year yield. Now, is this a false breakdown where we f fake everyone out and then rocket higher? Again, I'm not so sure. Uh, I'm not a short-term trader. I think we're going higher with the CRB to S&P 500, but that doesn't mean we go up in a straight line. So we'll see what happens here. Um, there is manipulation in this market with the 10-year yield. They, I know they're, been, they're in there buying bonds of some sort. I don't know how much. We have to we find that out later. But um, the 10-year yield and oil are highly correlated. And when they run out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, that is when things will get a lot more difficult for them. So I'm maintaining a long position. Uh, even though in the short term, it looks like it's breaking to the downside. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Uh, REMX, rare earth metals, still looks good to move on higher. It's been moving on higher out of this broken, uh, we'll call it falling type wedge. Uh, so that's looking good. Uh, lithium, LIT is breaking higher. We might see a retest move before going on up. Uh, so that's good. Looking a little bit better. The S&P 500, small down day today. Uh, again, it's not a reversal candlestick. It was just a small down day. Um, so nothing to worry about there. It does look like it wants to continue higher. Uh, same with the U.S. Composite Index, broken downtrend, broken higher high, and then we just got a small down day today. So maybe maybe we get a couple of small down days in a row, and then we move on up after that. Uh, EEM, emerging markets just moving sideways in a kind of a falling wedge type pa uh, pattern. Uh, the weakness in the dollar will be a tailwind to emerging markets. Looking at XHB, which is the Home Builders ETF, continuing to move higher, uh, looking actually quite strong. Uh, quite confusing if we were in a uh, real estate bubble, why would the Home Builders be going up? Uh, I know in 2006, they were declining. Uh, they were declining lower during that time frame. They were really eating it. Um, the home builders move before the real estate market crashes. Uh, we're starting to bounce higher here. To me, this looks like a consolidation period and then a breakout of that consolidation period and a potential move higher. Um, that's what I'm seeing here, a broken down trend line on the short term. And it looks to me like there's a lot of strength behind this. I don't see a topping pattern. Uh, Lumber is firming up. It's getting some support right at the support area. And this is at an entirely different level than what we've been at in, in earlier years. Uh, we do have a nice, strong kind of support level that comes through this area here if it were to break down. But we are at an elevated level, and we're just consolidating at that elevated level for uh, lumber. Uh, looking at nickel, just moving basically sideways for nickel. It's in this large con uh, consolidation period. Uh, palladium heading higher, looking good. I've always thought that since platinum can can substitute palladium, uh, and palladium historically has almost always been cheaper than platinum, uh, but platinum is less than half the price of palladium. And I think that the shortages of palladium will be the shortages of platinum because of the substitution that it can do. Uh, so I still like platinum more than palladium even though palladium does look good to go higher. Uh, Cocoa Futures still squeezing up, kind of zooming out, squeezing up between those two trend lines. Uh, wheat getting a little bit of selling pressure here, down a little bit, but again, we've broken the downtrend line. Um, you can even, it's somewhere in this vicinity there. Looking at soybeans, uh, this does look like it wants to go lower in the short term. Lots of selling pressure uh, today. Big down candlestick. Uh, I think we will head a little bit lower in soybeans. Uh, corn also getting some selling pressure. It is a hammer candlestick, but I do think it could potentially head a little bit lower. Uh, copper. Copper getting that bloody nose, bloody chest, however you want to call it. Uh, but we, we have broken the downtrend line. That downtrend line, uh, we're moving higher and we can move sideways for a little while.
Uh, coming on down, looking at Moo. Moo's getting that bloody nose as well. Big candlestick with a little bloody nose. Broken downtrend line. I still think this looks good to move higher. Uh, that's M-O-O. -O. Um, looking at aluminum. Aluminum did have a little bit selling pressure, but it's just basically grinding sideways, trying to get a base to form here uh, before moving higher. And then the, the Baltic Dry Index was down a little bit. Um, I don't know if this is a delayed quote uh, on here, but uh, a lot of the companies were up in shipping, but we're coming back to that resistance line, uh, support line, I should say. Once we hit the support line, I think we're going to get some support there and use it as a launching pad to move higher. Uh, but that's what I've seen today, guys. We could have a, a little bit of a pullback here in commodities. Oil got hit pretty hard, slapped in the face quite a, quite a bit. Natural gas surprisingly looks pretty strong. Uh, put in a bullish uh, engulfing candlestick. Uh, so it is surprising to see oil uh, get hit like that. And it did break out of its downtrend ch uh, channel to the upside. We could be doing a return move, which is that retest of the breakout uh, today. Now we got to see what the buyers do tomorrow. Uh, I'm still positive on oil. Uh, I know that they've got strategic petroleum reserve releases probably for a couple more months. So and the Freeport LNG will come on later in 2022 for natural gas. So I'm a bull. Uh, I'm just waiting for that kind of to play out. In the medium term, short, short, I should say in the short term, we could see a pullback in natural gas. We could see a pullback in oil. There's still fears in the market. And we're seeing that 10-year yield decline. The 10-year yield is what pivots money into the commodity sector. Higher 10-year yield usually pivots more money into oil and natural gas and those types of uh, investments from a, we'll call it from a investment liquidity standpoint. The supply demand is still uh, superior over there in oil. They're just using strategic petroleum reserve releases uh, to basically <laughs> punch it lower. So when they, when they lose that, that, um, firepower out of inventory. We'll see what oil does. I think we're going to go a lot higher. Uh, we could see some ridiculous numbers, in fact. So this is going to be kind of the calm before the storm. Uh, and I think that there's going to be more inflation out there uh, as, as oil goes higher, as natural gas goes higher uh, later this year. All right, guys, that's what I've got for today. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, uh, subscribe to the Platinum membership below if you want to know how I'm playing this and my favorite companies, how to play the oil and natural gas and these energy markets. I also have a lot of precious metals information on some of the companies. We had we just had a question and answer session yesterday. Uh, you can see the results of that if you uh, join the videos posted on the website if you want to watch it. Uh, lots of companies that we talked about uh, yesterday on some of the ones that I think are good. Uh, some of them actually went up quite uh, a bunch, you know, a bunch today. Uh, so that's good. But um, that's all I've got. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Finding Value.